Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about modeling absorption with oscillators. So, for this example, what I have is platinum deposited on silicon. Now, it's important to note that the platinum that I've deposited is uh, about 150 nanometers thick. I intentionally deposit this thickness because I know that this is sufficiently thick such that the amount of absorption will be uh, so much that the light will not be able to reach the substrate. And what this basically means is that uh, as far as the model is concerned, the, the film that we've deposited is infinitely thick and therefore we can treat it like a substrate and just model it as, as if it, it is the substrate. Uh, so as a result that simplifies this because we don't need to have any, any layers. This is just to get the properties or to get a model that works well for this material so that we can apply it to layered stacks later. So uh, I'm going to start off by just going to none right here with substrate to start to model it and we're going to use the technique that I uh, showed in the last video where we use a b-spline. So we have this b-spline that we're going to use. I'm going to use the, uh, the approach where I have a starting material. I'm going to go right here and go to metal and then go down to there's a few different uh, platinum files. I'll just choose this one, platinum.mat. And now I've got the splines that describe the optical constants. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fit. And they shift a little bit, which, which shows that, th that, that the properties of this layer are, or this material are uh, very close to the platinum that we've deposited. I'll go back to Psi and see that with minimal effort, I, got, I have a really good fit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to parameterize the results of this B-spline fit into oscillators. To do that, I right-click B-spline, and this little menu pops up. And I go to Parameterize Layer, uh, Gen Os for General Oscillator. OK. So um, now what the General Oscillators basically are is they're physical models that describe the oscillation of, you know, absorbing particles or particles that take the energy from a light wave and uh, you know, turn it into kinetic energy which therefore therefore causes them to oscillate so it's very much like a ball on a spring model where the driver for the oscillation is uh, the energy supplied by light so there's a number of different oscillators that we can use and basically what the idea here, here in this screen is is that we've got these curves, which are the results there, the, the dielectric functions E1, E2, that we got from the B-spline fit. And then we have this E1, E2 new layer, which we are going to describe with oscillators and attempt to get it to fit to these um, results from the B-spline as best as possible. Basically parameterizing the optical constants that, or the optical uh, curves that are given to us by the B-spline fit with uh, equations that have a very small, a, a few inputs rather than having to fit every single spline uh, every single time we do this. Now, this can give us a much more flexible model. It runs a lot faster. It's better for doing uh, mapped scans. And because it's more flexible, it won't require that we go through all the steps of fitting a B-spline, which can be complicated each time and we can just take layers that are flexible that can be applied to a material and just throw them into you know uh, more complicated stacks of materials and get get better results uh, it's also a lot more useful for semi-absorbing films where maybe the amount of absorption might vary a lot from uh, from at different wavelengths from film to film depending on how it was uh, uh, synthesized so uh, to proceed here, what we're going to start doing first is modeling the absorption. Uh, and I'll just point out that you can change the units here. I'm working in E1, E2, and uh, EV, and I just I just like to work there. But if you think better in N and K and nanometers, or E1, E2 and nanometers, you can you can deal with that however you like. Uh, but I'll I'll always work in these. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the imaginary part only from this little menu. And now we're just going to be describing the uh, absorption uh, first. And the reason why we want to describe the absorption first is because uh, basically th these the relationship between E1, E2 is from what's called the Kramer's-Kronig relationship. And in that equation, 
the integral of all of the absorption throughout the entire spectral range is a, uh, a value that goes into the equation which calculates E1. So we want to try to get this as accurate as possible such that when we fit E1 and E2 together, the result of fitting E2 will get taken into account uh, when fitting E1, and that will give us a, a more accurate fit of E1. So to start off adding oscillators, I'm just going to go here to this oscillator menu and hit add, and then I get a menu where I can select the oscillators I like. Um, now they all have kind of pros and cons and some of them are better for modeling certain things than others. For metals, Lawrence is generally always going to work, um, but we also have these Druda oscillators that can extract um, more useful properties out of the material such as resistivity and uh, carrier concentration, mobility, things like that. But we'll just use Lawrence for now. And so when I add an oscillator in, I see, you know, here I've got this oscillator I can move around now. And I can just drag it around like this, or I can also, you know, put the numbers in that that, if, that change its shape and its location. So, you know, the, the amp 1 is its, is its amplitude. The, uh, you know, BR1 is its broadening, or how, how broad it is, and that's, that's this. And then the energy is where it's centered. So the center of it moves and energy moves. I can play with these by, you know, clicking here and typing in a number and for, you know, selecting it to be fit or not fit. I can set mins and maxes in the fit, for example. I can also just hover over and hold shift and just roll the mouse wheel up and down uh, or control shift and then roll it up and down in smaller increments. So those are the different ways you can, you can play with the oscillators. Uh, and when I'm when I have an oscillator that obviously has to like where the peak of it has to move off of the scanned range, I, I'm going to want to select this expanded axis so that the axis uh, the axes will scale with me as I move these oscillators around. So, all right, so let's just try to like you know visually get this oscillator to match, and I'll just make it a little broader. And one of the things that you can kind of see is. It's going to be tricky. You can already see it. It's going to be tricky to get this one oscillator to fit because it's going to kind of swoop down too much, or it has to be really wide and then it's lower, and then it's not going to quite have a curvature that will match. So it looks to me, as, as I'm starting to play with this, that I'm going to require more than one oscillator, uh, meaning that there's, there's an oscillator centered around more than one energy. And by looking at it just from experience, it looks like I would need two, maybe two or three oscillators of the same type to, to do this. So I'll add another one. And to do that, I'm just going to basically hit add. And then it'll just assume I want one more of the, of the exact same type. Uh, if I want to change it, I can just click this and then I can select a different oscillator. And you can, you can mix and match oscillators. Um, in this case, just dealing with a metal, I, I wouldn't really do that. If you're doing something where in one range it's, you know, absorbing a lot or it just you know, continues to absorb a lot from that point out and then it stops absorbing somewhere else you might explain it with a mix of oscillators or you might have uh, just one oscillator that can explain uh, both for example so with this second oscillator I'm gonna move I don't know somewhere like here to start I'll make it a little more broad and I'll drop it and I can go back, click this one, and then start to alter this one again. And yeah, I'll, I'll drop it a little bit more. And I'll make it a little broader. And it's getting pretty close as it is. At this point, I can probably just fit it, and, and it will, it'll will probably get the answer right. Um, and we'll see. Maybe we need to add a third oscillator if it, if it can't. And I'm just going to go to Fit Menu, hit All, and it will just fit all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Fit. Cool. And this is what I get. I'll go back to auto axis. So you have these two oscillators. One of them has a high amplitude and it's centered around one EV. And then the other one has a much lower amplitude. It's a lot broader and it's centered around 2.7 right here. So, and we can see that our, our new layer matches our, our model uh, basically perfectly. And then over here, it shows us the results of the fit and you know the error in the fit. So now I'm going to go over to the, the real part, which describes their refractive index. And I am going to uh, try to get our new layer to match the old one. So 
what these different uh, parameters will do, this E infinity basically will just shift this up and down, and IR pole amp will basically shift in the IR refractive index down due to some you know, absorption in the IR, and which we have uh, plenty of. Our our model is going down, and also you know if you remember the the uh, absorption kind of starts to go up as we get down to lower energy, so that's going to explain that pretty well. So what I'll start to do is I'll just start to roll this pole amp up until I can kind of get the uh, same kind of shape. So that looks like it's got the same shape. And we're, we're not probably not going to need these UV pole amps because that will do what I just did to this end of the graph. It will do that to the other end. And uh, we, we don't really seem to need any of that. So now I'm just going to use this E infinity. I'm just going to uh, roll it up until it matches it so it's pretty close. And then I'm just going to fit this and fit that and just hit fit. OK. It matches pretty well. It matches better in the middle. It kind of falls apart here and falls apart there. But keep in mind that this is going to get adjusted when we fit the two of them together. So I'm going to go now to all. And I've got all the same parameters are still being fit. I'm just going to go ahead and fit. Cool. So now it takes the result of this uh, oscillator model, which explains absorption. It integrates it. And then that goes into the calculation of every single uh, point along this curve. And that that addition to the model tidies up how, how good the fit is. So now we've we've matched these really well and I can I'm just going to replace it and just going to go replace layer. So now my my B spline has been replaced with the general oscillator and all the same things, all the exact same numbers that we got from our fit in the parameterized layer screen are here and all the different things we were fitting to get that are still fit. So now we could just unfit these and you know not use them let's say and you could save it as like a tabulated file or you know you could just leave them being fit i'll leave them as being fit and i'm just going to go ahead and fit uh all this now so fit cool and i get a really nice fit some of these numbers changed a little bit as they're applied to more of the data that's you know uh got all the diff all the angles involved and uh, you see the error in the fit went up very slightly, but it really is, is not enough to really mean anything. It went up by about 0.1. Cool, so now I have this oscillator layer, which describes uh, the, you know, the absorption and the index of my platinum layer. So if I want to use this later, what I can do is just, you know, right click this and I can just hit uh, save layer optical constants. And I'll, I'll, you can save it as parameterized or tabulated. I'm going to save it as a parameterized layer, and you know and you can save it as whatever you as whatever you like. And um, cool. So I yeah I, I actually have a a, a Lawrence oscillator oscillator uh, platinum file already. Let's just you know get out of here and we'll just clear this model. And I, so I've done this in the past, and I'll just open this up and I'll just go to my you know platinum Lawrence and open it up. Cool. And I have this. And the numbers are a little bit different than the other one were, but if I just go ahead and fit, fit, and fit all, and we just fit it, what we get, we get the same exact answer, and these adjusted to match. So while I had probably used this layer in the past uh, on, a, on a different platinum layer or fit it recently on a different platinum layer and, and saved it, it just adjusted itself and matched this without any problem. So the, the, the oscillators are quite flexible in that kind of way. And we will in the next uh, in the next videos, we will use oscillators more for some more uh, advanced techniques. Okay, stay tuned.